So hi everyone. Hello. Today's tutorial will be focusing on line charts and area charts and variations of those where you have another dimension of data and you want to split it. This is a continuation of this introduction to D3 video that I've got online already where I explain the line chart from the ground up and that will sort of be our starting point. So I'm kind of expecting that you understand this line chart code and I'll start from here. This is what I'm going to cover today is line charts, how the axes uh, and the scales really change what gets communicated, like how to lie with statistics. You know, you could just change the range of the scale and say, oh, it's such a huge increase, but it really isn't, <laughs> you know. And then, yeah, line charts, nesting, multiple lines, coloring the lines, area charts, and stacked area charts. I'll start with this. Um, let's say you wanted to represent the population of the whole world in 2014 and 2015. So that's what this is. These two data points are, in 2014 and 2015, these, this w these were the population values for the whole world. And if you plot that in a typical line chart where the y-axis starts at zero, this is what you get. You can't really see the change, even though there is a change. But if you were to use the population extent, like the minimum and the maximum value, for the y-scale, this is what you would see. So the point of these two examples is whether or not you use a zero baseline really matters in terms of what the chart shows. And for for values like population, that's like, it could be zero or it could be some number. It's basically a count of things. When you have data that looks like this, it's I think it's generally good to use a zero baseline. And so here's what it looks like if you plot the population of the world from 1950 to, I think, 20, uh, 2012 or 2015. And so this is a more telling visualization. So this is, this is what happens when you split the data over time and you see mul multiple values over time. And so from this chart you can really see that you know the population of the world more than doubled in the past 50 years. And to me that was a wild thought. So let's say you wanted to split this into multiple lines. We can use d3.nest to do this. So what d3.nest does, well, this example here, it just invokes d3.nest to restructure the data in the way that we want. So here's, here's what the original data looks like. For each country, for each year, there's a value for the population. And so in China in 1950, China in 1951, and then if you scroll down, you see India over all the different years, and then the U.S. and Brazil. These are just, it's just filtered to show the top five countries. So this is the structure of the data. And remember, the structure of the data for the previous example was, it was just two columns, the year and the population. And this is pretty straightforward to make as a line chart. It's basically the same code as the introduction to D3 line chart. But certain things change when you want to make it multiple lines. And so the first thing we would want to do is split up the data so that the time series values for each country are isolated. And so we want to have something like this data structure, you know, where we have the year and the population, but we want to have this data structure for each of the countries. And that's what d3.nest can give us, given this kind of a data as input. And so here's what the code looks like. We're loading the data. When the CSV file is loaded, it gets passed into this render function. And it just calls d3.nest with a key function that returns you know, d at line column. So remember, d here is it's a D3 convention. This is the row object for an individual row of the table. And then line column here is a variable that says country. And you could change this depending on the data. 
And then once we've set up the key function, we call dot entries with the data, and this gives us our nested data structure that we're going to use to draw multiple lines. And then this, this piece of code here just renders this nested, this data structure as JSON up here. So let's see what it looks like. The key for each of these top level objects is the country name. And so this is an array of objects, each of which, ha each of which has key and values. And so the key corresponds to the country, and then the values corresponds to all the rows of the data for that country. So you see, you know, the first entry is China, and the values are all the different years and the population values just for China. And then likewise for India, and then likewise for the, the US, and so on. After we've done d3.nest, this is what a line chart can look like when you have multiple lines. So I'll go through the code for this in detail, and I'll compare it to the previous example that's just one line. So if we start looking through this code, there's another column called line column here, another variable called line column, and this is what I'm going to use with d3.nest. And then scrolling down, this is a lot of the stuff that was there before. You know, the same line function as before. But now in the render function, there's a call to d3.nest that will nest the data based on this, this variable line column, which is country. And then this part is substantially different from the previous example. So let me just show you what the previous example looks like with just one line. So the way that D3 line charts work is you have an SVG path element. And in this example, I know that there's just going to be one of them. So I'm creating it up front here, outside of the render function. This creates an SVG path element that will eventually be set to be this line. And then inside the render function, I'm setting the D attribute of that path, that SVG path element, to be line of data. And this line is a D3 function that generates this uh, cryptic string that's an SVG path string that you can use with this special D attribute, which is specific to SVG paths. So this is the complete code right here that actually you know, puts the data into this line and renders it. But we want to do this for all the different countries now. So let's take a look at the multiple, the, the multi-line chart. What was one line before is now this set of lines here. And we're using the D3 uh, patterns of enter, update, and exit for these, uh, for these lines. So remember, G is the SVG group that contains the visualization, and it's offset by the margin. And I'm using the CSS class chart-line just to, you know, to select the lines. And then we, they have this class, so you can use CSS to style them if you want to, like change the, changing the line thickness and things like that. And so this is sort of standard D3 uh, the D3 pattern of, you know, select all lines, bind it to the data, which in this case is the nested data structure. And so when you call dot .data and pass it in array, and then use the dot .enter virtual selection, which is, you know, part of the D3 world, um, it will append a path element for each of the elements in this array that you pass in. And remember what this array is, it's nested, which is the result from d3.nest. So if you look again at this output from d3.nest, each object is a time series for one country. And we can use the key property to get at the name of the country here. So for each of the five countries, it's going to append a new path element. And then it's going to use... Um, you know, paths.attr d, which is for SVG paths, 
this is the this is the property that you set to the path string that gets generated by the this line function and then remember d has key and it has values and so instead of passing in data to the line function in this case we're passing in d dot values which is the array of rows for that particular country remember with d3.nest the values array is the time series for each individual country and so like one example of something that gets passed in here is you know d dot values might be the array of all rows that correspond to china or the array of all rows that correspond to india and so yeah that's that's how it works that's how you can make multiple lines on a line chart they're they're not they're not stacking it's just taking the data value and passing it into the line generator which uses the x and the y scales so they're all on a common scale there's no stacking happening yeah and so what if we wanted to add color to this um, here's what that would look like and it's very similar to the pre some of the previous mm, color examples and so let's just see what's changed there's now a color column variable and now there's a, a color legend group element, which is the container for this color legend over here. And um, yeah, I'm giving it a CSS class of color legend, so we can use CSS over here to um, to set the font and to set the font size. And uh, yeah, transforming it, translating it by so many pixels, that just positions it to the to the right. And then we have a color scale, which is d3.scale.category10. And then I'm using uh, Suzy Lu's wonderful color legend library, which is um, included here, d3 legend. It's a nice module. And so here in the render function, we set the domain of the color scale to be, so take a look at this code here. It's saying nested.map a function that returns the key of each object. And so nested, remember, has this array of five things. Each one of those five things has a key property, which is the country name. So this sets the domain of the color scale to be this array of country names. So this expression, when it gets evaluated, is the array of country names, like India, China, and Brazil. And so we're setting that to be the domain of the color scale. And then everything else is the same except we're also setting the stroke attribute on the SVG uh, path element, which is the color, the color of it. I think p lines don't have a fill. They only have a stroke. If you set the fill, it, it really doesn't do anything. Yeah. So we're setting the stroke attribute to be a function of the row. Well, actually, D here is the top level object. It's the time series for for each country. And so we can use d.key, which again gives us the country name here. And remember, this applies to the entire line. So this is d.key assigning the color and d.values assigning all the points of the line. And just let me just show you again what comes out of d3.nest is this array of objects, each of which has key and values. So yeah, that's how you can assign uh, color to each line. So all right, we got a line chart with multiple lines.